Now that I have the new amplifier here in my listening room set up and I'm using it every day, even though it's not quite finished, I thought I would do a bit of a system update, a room update, you could say. It's been a full year since I finished building these speakers right here, the main speakers for the room, um, which are an active four-way, and that's what this amplifier powers, and it has the crossovers built in here to do that, to drive these two speakers that I have in the front. Now, I also have another pair of speakers off to the side. These are my reflection replacement concept speakers, where I'm treating the sidewall reflections from the main speakers as in absorbing as much as I can. And to kind of simulate replacing that, I've made two smaller speakers that are on the sides here that fire directly towards my listening position. And they, they don't change the character of the sound stage that I'm getting with these speakers, which is massive like very wide, wider than the speakers themselves, tall and deep. It just pulls, it seems like it pulls me more into it, makes it more immersive. So you don't even realize that these speakers are on and working when it's working. It just deepens that sound stage, like in the front to back range, makes it way more immersive and more realistic. So anyway, um, these were set up initially with a digital crossover, a mini DSP 4x10 that was connected to two retail receivers, a Yamaha home theater receiver I had for like 25 years and a newer two-channel Onkyo. And that gave me the eight channels of amplification that I needed to drive the speakers, okay? And I used that mini DSP. It was like crucial in the setup and design of this amplifier right here, because I used that DSP, that digital crossover to figure out the best slopes to use in this amplifier right here, because inside here are analog crossovers, not digital, and they can't be adjusted. I had to do all of the work beforehand to figure out the best slopes and points because some of them kind of overlap. And that was that's another thing I need to talk about. To design and build these crossovers. And then I was able to match it up like almost perfectly between the analog solution that I have here, which is fixed, and the digital solution that I'm no longer using, down here at least. In a recent video, I talked about making measurements in your room and equalizing your speakers to get the best response you possibly can, the best sound quality in the room that you can. And I don't have that ability here. I can do some equalization through the computer in that, you know, I can install an equalizer into the computer. So like equalizer APO or something like that. But what I did when I was working with the mini DSP 4x10 in designing the slopes for this is I took away all the equalization I had there before and I just played with the slopes and the points that they cross over to get the best response and the best sound possible. In that some of these, okay, take the woofer to mid-woofer cross here. You know, a standard way is to pick a point between the two. Say, for this one, it's 350 around 350 degree, um, hertz. So you cross over the you know woofer at 350. And that's a, a low pass. And it'd be a high pass on the mid woofer at 350. And they would probably be the same slope, although it's not mandatory. But what I did here was I played with the slopes as in you know angles of the slopes 12, 24, so on and so forth. And I also played with the point where they cross over. So in, in actuality, and I'm just quoting this from memory, the woofer crosses at 300 hertz. No, not 300 hertz, 350 hertz. <laughs> I'm not getting it right here. And that's low pass, goes to the woofer. But the mid woofer crosses at 300 hertz which is like 50 hertz lower than that. And what I found when I set that up is that I had better coverage. 
Like I, I wound up with a flatter response here in this room. And, you know, I did it here and I also did it on the other speaker just to confirm that I was getting the same response there. And so it was. Also, uh, the low pass filter on the woofer is 24 decibels, while the high pass uh, filter on the mid woofer is 12 decibels. So I'm extending that coverage over a bit more too. Because what I found when I had straight slopes, like matching slopes and a fixed point between the two, say pick say 320 hertz, you would say that's a good compromise between 300 and 350, was that I was winding up with a dip in the response, the measured response. And my measured response for these speakers is not from the listening position. That's not the way I set them up. I went out about a meter from this this speaker, but I didn't do anything to gate the response. I just used the raw response here in the room. So it includes some of the room as well. So it's a more true response that's tailored to the room. I also ran some measurements when I had everything set up, still with the mini DSP from the listening position, just to confirm I wasn't having any big holes or problems in the response. I also I did a heck of a lot of listening here to make sure that I liked what I was getting. So this took a long time and it took a lot of experimentation and it took a lot of measurements to get there. But now that I have it or had it, I was able to hard code it into this amplifier right here. And you can say that this is a purpose built amplifier, especially designed to work in this room with these speakers, with me listening over there.